Hi guys, Alex here. Welcome back to Girl Talk. I've got a little bit of mess and a little bit of drama today for you guys. It is good to be back. The past few days, I was actually in Chicago. I had a lot of fun. It was such a fantastic city. All the sights, I just had a complete blast. But I am ready to get back to our regularly scheduled programming. And today, we're going to talk about why Foodie Beauty will never change. We've got a lot to catch up on. I'm going to give you guys a quick rundown and my perspective based on the things that I've been through and just why it seems that she is in such a bad position right now and nothing that she does seems to work. All that and more coming up on today's edition of Girl Talk. Let's just get right into it. I mean, shallow we? All right, you guys. So the last we have seen of Foodie, I think that she was still talking about that cat. She had released a video showing some receipts from Pete's. As if Pete's is a respected source of information in the community. Has anyone checked up on Pete's? Is he okay? Is he still kind of just sitting there twiddling his thumbs and responding to chat? It doesn't seem that anyone cares. I mean, ever since he left Chantal's, well, there was some interest in the beginning when he was moving into this new apartment, but Pete's fell off completely. It doesn't seem like anyone really cares anymore. Watching Pete's, it's one of those situations where you feel like you're being brought down with him. It really dampens my mood. But finally, we have moved on. Well, kind of, because lately she has been backsliding tremendously. The content that she is doing right now is akin to what she was doing in 2019, 2020 on her channel. She has made absolutely no growth as a person. She has made no growth as a YouTuber. I mean, sure, her numbers have gone up since then. Well, her subscribers have gone up, her views have gone down. Round and around like a cycle, we know all too well with Amber Lynn. At at this point, it feels like Foodie Beauty will never lose weight. She posted a video on June 30th. We're going to go ahead and start there. That was her last meal at Burger King. Yes, another fast food funeral. Number... I've lost count at this point. I guessed on Twitter and said that maybe it's fast food funeral number 11, but who knows? She is eating Burger King, not just a chicken sandwich, but a double chicken sandwich? How can she be living in such denial? She was supposed to be on this meal service, right? She had been hawking that for weeks, and this was intended to be her last fast food meal, but we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves here. So the meal service would be dietitian approved, tailored to her specific needs, and 1,200 calories per day. I think that 1,200 calories is what Dr. Now does when they are getting prepared for W. ULS. But Chantal hasn't addressed any of her underlying issues, and I don't think that she's working with these dietitians really. It's just a meal service. I'm sure there's a little bit of rapport, like she'll say, this is what I'm doing, and they'll say, okay, try this. But they're not going to hold her hand through this situation. It's not like a therapist or anything. In the past, Chantal has spoken about trauma that she went through growing up, but she has always said that she didn't want to speak about that. And I'm not sure what that is. Is, but perhaps that could be what continues to hold her back to this day and she is unable to shake her impulsivity. I have to question if she is genuine or not when it comes to this diet. I know everyone's screaming like, no, she's definitely not. Is this just content for her? I mean, it's worked for Amber Lynn over the past many years where she starts a new diet and then the diet goes down the toilet, but Foodie didn't last very long on this one at all. There has been a lot of conjecture about her BED diagnosis, whether that was something that she suggested that she have, or if she has an official diagnosis. Chantal talks about getting tips from TikTok instead of a doctor. I feel like TikTok can be a good tool sometimes, but it's definitely not a replacement for a professional. It's TikTok. And she talks about how she should just order one meal, right? Just one regular sized meal. I have been saying that for years. If she absolutely has to get take out? Why get a double chicken and a large fry? Why not just get a regularly sized meal so that she can acclimate herself to relatively normal sized portions? I know at these fast food restaurants, you know, the portions tend to be higher, 
higher in calories, but none of this is doing her any favors at all. She's really just dealing with cravings here. Her brain has become so used to the food, to that good old dopamine hit. But at the end of the day, she doesn't want to put in any real work or practice any discipline or self-control. It's not going to be easy. She wants this sort of quick fix and it just doesn't work that way. Moving right along, she followed that up with a video called I Have B.E.D and it's clear as day that she wants pity from her audience. She does not want criticism. Nobody is saying that this situation is going to be easy for her, but she laments that the diet meal was just a mistake because it is so drastic. She says it was about 1,100 calories a day and that's it. At this point, this woman needs drastic change, but I can admit that 1,100 just seems very low. It's not realistic for her at all. You would think now that she's in a different country surrounded by different people and new things that maybe that would help her along the way, but she's the same person that she's always been and she hasn't put in any work. She's just throwing money down the toilet with the diet box and even admits that she ate her first box so quickly, had the breakfast, then moved on to the lunch and had the lunch with the dinner at the same time. Who knows what she ate after that? She talks about using resources online and maybe joining a support group, but not therapy. Her man doesn't understand what she's going through, but I have heard that Salah may padlock the fridge so she can't get in. Maybe he really has to put his foot down to help his wife in the end. She claims that this is something that she does in secret. I mean, that tells you all that you need to know that this is such a problem. And then she tries to squeeze out a tear. Like I said, she just wants pity. And I've lost my sympathy bone. She follows that up by showing treatment papers from 2019. I don't even think that's relevant anymore. And then took to her community tab when she didn't get the response that she thought she deserved. Disabling comments on videos for now because I can't stand to have negative people in my internet space and this way I can live my life and not have to monitor comments. You really don't have to monitor comments. You could just let it run free, honestly. I really ain't got time for that. Okay. Next, she posted a video called What I Eat in a Day, B-E-D, and says that it's imperative that she makes changes right now, and she's looking into getting into therapy. Side note, her last two videos have green screen backgrounds, so cue the conspiracy theories. That all sounds well and good, right? But will she stick to it? I mean, how many times have we been down this path where she goes to like one meeting, she doesn't really like the therapist, or something goes wrong, she never calls them back to schedule another appointment. It's been like that for as long as I can remember. The girls know how to talk that talk, but they really don't know how to walk that walk. Sometimes it sounds like what they're saying is good, but we know in the back of our head if they don't stick to it, it's all just jibber jabber. So now she's not going to be worried about calories. She's just going to make sure that she doesn't give in to her BED and she'll be deleting all negativity from her channel. At least the comments were open on this one. She mentions that this will always be with her having to fight this battle. And I couldn't agree more. I mean, with my past struggles, it's just something that you have to really stick to and it does get easier. But still in the back of your head, you might get triggered by something and have to tell yourself no. She doesn't like telling herself no. It's an ongoing battle that will never leave you. She will be supplementing her meal boxes uh, with more food, I guess because she spent a lot of money on this meal service, but she's adding a lot of cheese, which I find to be scary if you know anything about Life by Jen. Maybe Chantal needs veggies with mustard. She talks about lacking proper nutrition. I think a lot of people are lacking proper nutrition. That's a big problem for her. I will admit, I don't think my nutrition is like 100%, not at all. But this is like a day one for her, girls. Although she continues continues to drink regular Coke. I just can't wrap my head around why she doesn't just get some diet soda. It doesn't even make sense. After that, her and Salah go for a walk in a couple's vlog called Kuwait Heat in the Summer. They went to get some pet stuff and then walk around the beach. This is mostly just a screenshot video. She wonders why people prefer to watch reaction channels. Well, this is why Salah is being a little bit of a shady queen with the full body shots, but at least Chantal left her Dingleberry Depot. Salah seems to be going down with this ship, if you catch my drift. Just take a look at this 
this screenshot right here. And then at the end of the video, her cat is like destroying the curtains and she just like lets her. I found that to be a little bit odd. Maybe say no, maybe try to move her. Like you're just gonna let her destroy your curtains. She'll continue to do that, right? Not my problem. Clearly Chantal has the same problem that Amber Lynn does. If she's not gonna take this seriously, her audience isn't going to take it seriously either. And that was all laid out bare for us all to see with this new video she posted, neutralizing food, Taco Bell quesadilla and fiesta potatoes mukbang. Is this all just a troll for her? It does seem like we are headed back to those past behaviors of 2019, where she would set her intentions that she wanted to change her life. And this was going to be that time that she was going to take the bull by the horns and completely change her life for the better. But here we are. It just feels like we're in the exact same place that we were years ago. Does she not realize that it can kind of be a bit of a slap in the face to her audience. It's very much giving Amber Lynn teas, but she clarifies in the comment section that she is not eliminating fast food. What do you guys think about this? Should she tries for some moderation? Is it just the fact that she's putting it out there after setting her intentions that is negative? It's not going to bring her the positivity that she so desperately wants or the pity that she also really wants. But it was Taco Tuesday and it was super cheap. So her and Salah just went for it. What's going on in Salah's head? Remember Foodie's intuitive phase when everything was just intuitive, even her fast food? She just caught it intuitive and thought that it would work. But we know how that all ended. She's claiming now that she's not on a diet. She doesn't like the word diet, diet culture, vulture, that kind of thing. But she has to think to herself, how does this look to her audience as well? It makes her intentions look like a joke. She's been beezing on cheese while Salah sleeps. But down the hatch, I guess. Watch this Taco Bell disappear. <laughs> I had this moment last night where I had like a little bit of a mini breakdown, but then I started watching like a Chantal compilation video and I was like, wow, like it could be worse, right? <laughs> last video we're going to cover, she came on in a live stream called Hi Beezers. She doesn't seem to be focused too much on the live streams lately, but she says that Salah doesn't really understand her situation. I can understand that if he doesn't have like that background or that knowledge or ever even dealt with someone who is struggling so deep deeply with their weight. I was wondering if we can get like a way in. I mean, how do we know as an audience if this is a proper journey, if she doesn't have way ins but she needs to find some sort of middle ground, moderation here. That's what she wants to kind of project, but I just don't see it because behind the scenes, who knows what she's eating? We've seen from her in the past, like her vegan phase where she was sneaking little bits of meat. It was all just a farce. If something is hard, Chantal doesn't want to do it, but this is going to be the hardest battle of her entire life and she needs to muster up some willpower somehow. During the live stream, people were talking about how she should probably get some hobbies. I mean, this woman doesn't really have any hobbies. She even talks about how she wants to travel in the future. That's been one of her goals lately. They've talked about going on these vacations, but it never came to fruition. And she even mentions how she would be so interested in the food when she travels. She should be traveling to see the sights, not for the food. But that's where her mind goes. Food is her hobby, her one and only hobby. Otherwise, she's just scrolling on her phone or doing gosh knows what. One of the major problems that she faces is that she has no consistency at all. She tries all of these fad diets, meal boxes, then she wants to supplement, then she wants to go vegan, then she wants to water fast, which remember she just water fasted a couple of weeks ago. That was never going to work for someone like her. Maybe if she just pitched something like uh, Weight Watchers and stuck to that, it would work out in the end. But for some reason, she has all of this impulsivity and she wants to switch things up. Maybe she gets bored. Maybe her life is just boring. I mean, she spends a lot of time just sitting indoors anybody would be bored out of their mind. But until she works through these issues, her impulsivity, why she does what she does, her past traumas, we've seen everything play out, the situation with Natter. Anybody would have a mental scar from that. But if she just lets this fester, even things from her childhood possibly, she will never change. All right, you guys, that's going to be it for today's video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And I will, of course, catch you guys in the next one. All right. Bye, guys.